Hey guys, Cody here, and this will just be a quick video, and you'll probably see a couple of videos with this background um, of one of my paintings. Um, but I just, I've got some quiet time in the house, so I figured I'd, I'd record a couple of videos. But anyway, uh, in this video I just wanted to talk to you about basically who you need to please as a artist or a creator of any sort. You know, whether you do music or sculptures or writing or anything, right? Here's the thing. There's really only two people you need to please. And... A lot of people that I know kind of have this, um, I don't know if it's an anxiety, but they, they feel like they need to please everyone with their work. And oftentimes I think a lot of people mean well um, and they start giving us ideas and they tell us like, oh, you should do this or oh, maybe you should try this and so on and so forth. But honestly, it it's great to take people's advice, but take it with a grain of salt because you as a as the creator know what you're trying to achieve right you know what you're trying to accomplish and because of that sometimes there's too many cooks in the kitchen and listening to too many people will give you uh too many opinions and you start doing things that aren't you know aren't to the core of your soul right uh so ultimately there's only two groups of people you need to satisfy as a creator the first one is yourself um you know the work of your, you probably know the quality of your work. Most people that I've talked to that, that write or paint or whatever, they're not self-delusional. They know whether their work is good or not. Now, I've met the other people that uh, think their work is great and it's terrible. I'd probably be in that group. Um, but anyway, a lot of people know the quality of the work that they're doing. And if they're not rushing it, then they know whether or not they intrinsically like that work. So you need to... Make sure that you're happy with your work, not anyone else um, as far as friends and family and strangers go. Because, I mean, you could show, I don't, I don't know how many people have seen my work. Hundreds and hundreds of people have seen my work, but very few have bought it. Like a dozen or less, right? Uh, actual different people. So my point is, is that you can like something and people can like it and give you ideas. Oh, you should do this. And I remember that when... I first started a lot of people were like oh do you do portraits you know do you do murals do you do landscapes and I was like oh no not really and they're like oh you should totally do that I mean I, I know this thing and you know they'll pay you for it and you can do this thing and then in my heart I knew that I didn't want to do it I I just love abstract like I love I love exploring colors and techniques I don't want to paint faces because I already know that I'm not good at it and sure if I maybe gave it enough time I could be good at it but I know in my heart that that's not what I want to do right and I think as artists and even when I was writing before this people would give me suggestions they read what I've written and they're like oh yeah that's cool but uh what if you did this and what if you did this with these these characters or what if you took the story in this direction and I would listen to all these ideas and then I'd get stuck right I would want to try to mesh out all these ideas, but there's not enough time for that, right? So you need to do what you feel is the best um, as far as where your work is going to go. Sometimes that means you just follow the same method over and over again. Sometimes you maybe stretch it out a little bit, but you kind of keep some kind of core that remains true to yourself. So for me... I generally do scrape paintings, but sometimes I do other types, but it's always with gloss enamel paint because that's, I just know that's me. That's, that's what makes my paintings unique as opposed to most of the people I know. And that's just my thing. Everybody has their own thing. So, but anyway, so the first person is yourself. The second person, the second really only person, uh, other person that you need to satisfy is, is a buyer, is the buyers. So, I care so much about what people think about me as far as when they buy my stuff. Like, I want them to genuinely enjoy buying from me. And um, so recently, when I sold a painting, I actually shipped another painting with it for free. And it's because I wanted that person to to really have a good experience with me. And they had only paid for one painting. And I felt that the painting that they bought uh, needed to, the, the piece that I shipped with it was kind of a compliment piece. And so when I shipped the first one, I shipped the second one with it for free. And I didn't tell them, I didn't, uh, I just kind of did it because I wanted to provide a good customer, you know, service. 
and the person was so excited that they paid for the second painting. So it's not, and you're going to get customers that are challenging. That does happen, right? They don't like something about it or, you know, they find complaints and stuff like that. Look, that, that's just the nature of every business. And I think when you're starting out, sometimes you have to deal with those people. But when you get, you know, bigger or when you have a lot of clients, then you can kind of pick and choose. But from what I've heard from most people who have become successful at something, they had to start with customers that paid the bills but were challenging until they got to the point where they could pick and choose their clients. Um, now you can do that right off the bat if you're not financially um, unstable or if you're not just trying to get rid of the pieces. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of your choice, right? But if this is, you know, this is how you make money and you get those challenging people who want you to just change one thing or they like it, but they want to return it because of some, something that happened or, you know, maybe they want to exchange it for a different piece and, you know, that happening one time, okay, that's understandable. But if, if that happens again and again, it's like, okay, maybe just from that point on, you won't work with that person, right? But that's ultimately, those are the two only real people you need to satisfy as some kind of creator. You know, it's not about your mom. It's not about your family. It's not about strangers on the street who see your work or people online. It's great if they like it and it's okay if they don't. Like there's a lot of people that don't like my work. That's cool. There's also hundreds of people that do. But ultimately, I'm not painting for people to like my work. I'm painting because I enjoy it and there are a very select few of people who appreciate it enough to, to buy it. So those are really the only two people. Just remember that. Remember that you can't please everyone. Um, and people, I think a lot of people mean well, but they also, I think some part of them um, are trying to live vicariously through creative people. So people who can't write will give a lot of opinions because if it comes to fruition, somehow they can say that they were a part of that, right? So you just kind of have to be careful. But ultimately, I would say do what you feel is intrinsically right and take care of your buyers. Because if you stay true to like what you are and your theme or whatever, you know, it is that is unique about you, eventually people will gravitate towards that. And the more that you keep putting out works that are of consistent quality and, you know, kind of have your trademark to it. I mean, obviously, if you do any kind of work, your work can kind of look like someone else's, but your work will most likely have some kind of common theme and people will start to recognize that and they expect it. And when I don't paint for a while, people start asking, why haven't you painted for a while? You know, they come to expect it. Now, again, if they're not buying, I'm not making it for them, but I'm, I'm genuinely grateful that they're interested in the work that I do. And you never know when someone's going to buy something from you because there could be there there have been times when people have seen the work that I've done I've posted dozens of paintings and they didn't buy a single one of them but then all of a sudden I post one that I I hate right I I think it's a decent painting but I don't like it personally as far as the painting itself goes and then someone messages me hey uh I want this painting and they've seen all the other work and you're kind of surprised you're like oh oh uh, okay cool you never know, right? It's got to resonate with the people. Um, but ultimately, just, just paint for yourself. Paint what you enjoy to paint because it's a lot easier to go ahead and do the things that you enjoy, especially if this is, you know, your passion or your hobby and you're going to do it anyway. You may as well enjoy it. And if people aren't buying, then you may as well enjoy the process of making the paintings. And if people are buying, then it's just a good byproduct of doing what you already like and being able to get something else out of that as opposed to just the enjoyment of the of the hobby itself. So just remember that, just uh, those two things, that those are the only real two people that you need to, to satisfy when it comes to, uh, you know, any creative arts. And uh, I hope that this video was, you know, helpful to you, you enjoyed it, all that stuff. Uh, if you did, I've got other videos. Please check them out. You know, subscribe if you thought it was helpful, and uh, I will. Uh, I'll see you guys in another video. Okay, take care.